Hey, this is Steve Becker. I'm recording a video for Valiantis, and this is going to be around how to automate onboarding users into your JIRA instance with governance documentation. So a business case for this, and a good one is, you know, you have a lot of users that you're adding to your JIRA instance, or even not a lot. You just want to automate the process of sending out governance documentation or anything that a new JIRA user might need. This can take a lot of manual work if you're not doing it, especially have a bunch of users coming in all at once. So this video will help show you a solution to that in terms of how to completely automate a user getting added to your system and sending them out whatever uh, documentation that you might need. Let's get to it. Share my screen. And here we go. All right, so first let's show how to go about doing this. And there's multiple solutions you could possibly do with this. I'm only showing one example. So just keep that in mind, you know, everyone's context is different. So some solutions might work, some might not. We're going to first touch upon the webhooks. So to get to webhooks in the system, you need to click on the gear icon like I just did. Go to Jira setting system. And then you just scroll all the way down until you see webhooks underneath this advanced section. Okay, so what are webhooks? Webhooks essentially listen for some event that happens in a system and then send some data related to it. So I'll say that one more time. A webhook listens for an event in a system and then sends out some data related to that event. And there's all kinds of events that you can do with webhooks. So for instance, when you click on that create a webhook button, it'll take you to a screen like this. And you can see issue related events. You can specify if you want an event to be triggered around attachments created or comments created. I mean, there's all different kinds of examples. There's user-related events, which we'll be using. There are Jira configuration-related events too, such as voting, watching, subtasks, et cetera. Project-related, some helpful Jira software-related events, such as maybe a board got created or a sprint got created. And something important here too is you wanna leave this empty because if you check this off, you won't be sending any data when the event occurs. So I've already got one created. I just wanna show you what this looks like first. Another thing too here is that we got this placeholder as well. So I'll show you what this means. We'll just call this test webhook for now. And we'll just say issue created. All right, so this is just a test. This is the one we're actually gonna be using for the automation. I just wanna show you this so it makes sense. If we go into global automation, when we create a rule, we have triggers for the automation. One of these triggers is called incoming webhook. This incoming webhook has a nice description in case you forget what it means. Um, pretty succinctly, it says incoming webhooks are a simple way to trigger an automation rule from an external source. Here, we're just going to copy this webhook URL that Jira very usefully makes for us. We're going to go back into this webhook we have here in the global settings. We're going to hit edit. We're going to replace this placeholder URL with the one generated from our automation. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save. And then we hit save here too. This is just for um, an example of what to do when you start creating your web hook. This is what I already created. We're just gonna review it real quick. So you can see here, here's the URL associated with the automation that I made earlier. I've just called this user added. The event 
that this webhook is really is listening for is user created. So whenever a user gets added into the Jira system, we're going to send out some data related to that user to the automation so that it knows what to act upon. So it's going to cancel here. Let's go check out the automation now. So here we're just going to leave this. Yep, that's fine. And we're going to go new user onboarding here. So here you see that trigger that I just covered, the incoming webhook. This is the URL that it's listening for. We see some different auto logs that I have here just to help with transparency on what's happening. I'm going to read this one. Hit update. So to access data from the webhook, now that we're sending it in, and we'll go over what this looks like in action here in a bit. We access the webhook data through smart values. And smart values is a value wrapped with these curly brackets here. And you can see the way to access it is webhook data, that user, and then whatever property you want to access, like account ID, or another helpful one is display name. If we come back here, it will show you how to access this and some examples with, um, can I provide additional data? Um, so you see here, right, like this is the example that they have for release version. So um, that's just an easy way to remember in case you forget how you access your webhook data as a smart value. They have a, a nice example in the trigger itself for documentation. The last step of this, pretty easy, it's pretty much two steps. We get data from the user created event in Jira system. And then we take some of that data and send it out as an email. Here I created an email address. This is just webhook data um, dot user dot display name with the domain of my company's organization tagged on at the end. A caveat to this solution is if you have contractors or third party vendors and they might not necessarily get a domain assigned to them, um, that's something that you might want to look out for. This is assuming that all your users are going to be sharing the same uh, domain essentially. So in this email, I'm just plugging in that smart value of email address. I'm also plugging in my personal domain just so we can see it better. I'm using test emails, um, test, I'm using dummy emails uh, just with what I'm going to show here. And then the subject line is this going to be a little personal touch of welcome, webhook, data, display name. And in the content, you can see I put in some HTML. It's OK if you don't know HTML. You can always get this from your marketing team. And this will help just to brand the message that you're sending out to your new users to make it look professional. I also have an Ahref here. Um, you can put in Google links or uh, Google Drive links, OneDrive links, whatever you want to do to share access to documentation. So that's where you do that here. And you'll see like just tangibly what that would look like in the email. Um, so let's go ahead and fire this off. Going to go ahead and create a dummy email. OK. So as soon as I invite this user, we're going to see this webhook trigger. This webhook doesn't trigger once the user accepts the invite. This automation triggers as soon as you send that invite out. So that's something else to be aware of. If we go into the role build builder, um, let's go to the audit log. We see the success message here. That's it, show more. So these are the logs that I was showing earlier, and we can get more into this, but this is the webhook data coming in. We got that account ID. We got the display name. This is a full look on what that data looks like, which is a little bit hard to read, so you might need to be doing some squinting, but there's that account ID. Or I should say here it is. If we go a little bit farther down, let's look for display name together. And here it is as well. And then this is just showing that you can access these 
from this huge body of data. And then we also see that successful email, um, that the email got fired off successfully. Going back to real details. These are those logs that I was showing earlier. Just how to access them in case you want to see that. Double brackets, webhook data.user to display name. And this is webhook data.user. Now let's go look at the email that got sent. So this is what that email looks like. Um, you can add some styling here. Once again, that's why it might be helpful to do this in HTML. You can get that HTML once again from your marketing team. And then this is about what a link like looks like hyperlink wise. I just put this to google.com, but once again, you can do this to your Google Drive. That's where you keep your governance documentations. You could do it to uh, OneDrive as well with team, team. Um, There's all different kinds of options for where you store your governance. So that's what this could look like. So to cover all this one more time, we created a webhook in the advanced system settings here. We set the URL to the automation we created. We chose an event of user created. Oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> it's not all there too. Here we go. Yep, that's fine. We created a user related event where when a user gets created or invited in the JIRA system, we then trigger this automation. In the automation itself, we have this trigger of webhook, once again, that we're just showing that URL here that we put into that advanced settings URL. We're storing a variable of email address and tagging on the company's domain name at the end. And then we're sending out this email with whatever documentation URL links that you want to include to the new user. So this is a very helpful way to update, or I should say, uh, to automate the process of onboarding new, new users into your system in terms of governance processes and documentation and things like that. I hope you found this helpful. And thanks for watching.